The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. There is power at work in creation. By faith, we call that power the Word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of God, word of life. Have you found your... Psalm 29 there, it's about a half inch into the hymnal. And we'll read this in unison. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Amen. The Christmas Gospel told us the Word of God became human. His name is Jesus. And that name still has power to create. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they replied, No, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So then he said, Well, into what then were you baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Eternal life. Ale- 
there is violence in heaven, but the result is peace on earth. This is real power at work. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Please be seated. I see we have some uh, children in the house. I'd like to have them come up first for a, a, a children's moment. Could we have them, kids, come up? Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hi, Kai. Come on up. I want to show you something. You will never guess what this is. Let me show you. Any idea what this is? A towel. <laughs> How could you possibly think this is a towel? Maybe if I do this with it, you'll know what it really is. A cape. Whose cape do you suppose this is? I'll give you a clue. Oh, oh, I shouldn't be doing this because today we all got somebody else in mind. You're thinking of Star Wars or something like that, I'll bet. You're not thinking of that? Well, I'll tell you whose cape this is. For me, this is Zorro's cape. You probably never heard of Zorro, did you? Do you know who Zorro was? Zorro was this guy, I think from Spain or something, and, uh, or maybe Mexico. And he wore, a, he wore a black mask, and he wore a cape, and, uh, and a black, black pants and boots, and he rode a black horse, and he ran around the countryside fighting bad guys and saving people, and his name was Zorro, and he fought with a sword. He was a swordsman, and whenever he felt like it, he would go whoosh, 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 and uh, on the belly of one of the guys he was fighting, he would carve a, uh, in their clothes, he would rip a Z for Zorro. And he was my hero when I was a boy. And every Halloween, for instance, when we would dress up, I would dress up uh, in a Zorro outfit. And I'd ask my mom for a towel. You're right, it is a towel. And sometimes it was a dish towel. And uh, I know once in a while she would get a, a towel like this and she said, oh, Dean, uh, you can't wear that one, that's dirty, let me wash that. And I'd say, Mom, it doesn't matter because Zorro was used to fighting bad guys and he would roll around and fight and fisty cuff and stuff and get all dirty. I said, it doesn't matter if it's dirty. I'm Zorro, Mom. She said, no, you can't wear that. And I'd say, Mom, I'm Zorro. Tell me something. Do you guys ever pretend to be somebody else? Do you ever do that? Who do you like to pretend? Princesses? Sure. Is that what you said, Anna? Princesses? Yeah. That's, that's kind of fun. Uh, anything else, you guys? You ever pretend? You're one of the turtles, like one of the ninja turtles? Yeah. All right. That's kind of like Zorro. The ninja turtles are fighting evil and bad guys too, aren't they?
What do you think? What do you say? PJ Mask. I, I, you'd, I'll, have to, I'll have to learn about PJ Mask, but I'm sure it's worth pretending. Pretending that we're somebody else is not only fun, it's really very important. This kind of play is really important. Do you know, play is one of the most important things to God. In fact, C.S. Lewis said, uh, play is the most serious business of heaven. When we play, we, and when we pretend we're somebody else, it's fun, but it's more than fun. We are sort of rehearsing and learning how to be more than we are right now. When we're pretending to be grown-ups, whether it's a princess or Zorro or PJ Mask or one of the Ninja Turtles, we're, we're, sort of, we're sort of rehearsing and practicing what it would be like to be bigger and stronger and more than we are right now. One of the things that uh, God wants us to do is act like Jesus. We're not like Jesus yet. We're becoming like Jesus. But God calls us to sort of live into the life of Jesus. That's why we come here on Sunday mornings and we say these words and we dress in clothes that we don't normally dress in and we have things around us that we don't normally have. They're signs and symbols of God's kingdom where we're the princes and the princesses. We're the kings and queens in God's kingdom. And we are encouraged by our Lord to act like it, to talk like Jesus, to act like Jesus and to say to each other peace and forgiveness and love, things like that. And we start sort of pretending almost. We sort of act into Jesus and we become Jesus when we do this. We, his spirit in us makes us one with him and we grow up into Christ our Lord. It's a wonderful thing to pretend. Don't ever feel funny or embarrassed about pretending. It's very important work. All of us, when we're young, pretend to be bigger and stronger. Someone we're not. That's how we learn. That's how we grow up into men and women of faith and courage and godliness. Let's pray. Oh, God, we thank you for all the heroes and heroines around that uh, inspire us and call us to be like them. Help us, Lord, to dare to pretend and to act and to speak like those who show us what it means to be your children. Help us to learn to grow up to be like Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Well, okay. Thanks for being here, guys, helping us to think about these things. Very important. Let us pray. God, help us now here beyond uh, the words that I share, uh, your word, your voice, calling us to live into all that we can be in Christ our Lord. Amen. Heard a story the other day from uh, one of my favorite models in life, maybe one of yours, Chuck Gavin. Pastor Gavin, Dr. Reverend Chuck Gavin, and he's kind of a Luther scholar, and he told me a story uh, about Luther that I had not ever heard before. And uh, it's about baptism, so I thought I'd share it with you. Luther uh, lived and preached in Wittenberg. Uh, he taught in Wittenberg, but he preached in a church there. And he was there for uh, over 10 years, I guess, and so he knew a lot of people, and a lot of people knew and recognized Martin Luther, Dr. Luther. And so one day Luther was walking down the street of the city and met a man from his, the, the church where he preached. And I don't know the man's name, I'll call him Johannes. And uh, Luther greeted him and, uh, Johannes, how are you doing? Now, Johannes was the consummate complainer. Nothing was ever good enough for Johannes, whether it was the food or whether it was the sermon or whether it was the order of service in the church or whether it was the way the children were behaving or, or 
It, it, the, the government officials or anything, nothing was ever right for Johannes. Luther sees him on the street, says, Johannes, good morning. How are you doing, Johannes? Well, of course, Johannes launches into this litany of complaint about whatever. And this time, Luther listened for, you know, a few moments, a couple minutes or something. And all of a sudden, he broke in on Johannes. And he said, Johannes, Johannes, are you baptized? Johannes paused. What do you mean, am I baptized? Luther said, are you baptized, Johannes? And Johannes says, well, yes, of course. Of course I'm baptized. I'm a member of the church. I'm baptized. Luther says, good day, and turned and walked off down the street. Now, he's not trying to scold or bawl out old Johannes. He's not like the, you know, the moral police trying, trying to scold him. He longs to he longed for Johannes to be able to break free from the chains of self in which that poor man was bound. He was like a dog in a whistle factory. He, was, he had to answer to every thought that came into his head. And if a thought came into his head that was like a complaint, which most of them were, he'd start talking about it. He'd just follow that thought, follow that complaining feeling. Are you baptized, Johannes? Then break free. Live into your baptism. Pretend if you have to, but speak blessing and have a good day, Johannes. Learn who you are in Christ. For Luther, baptism was the central defining event of his life, as it was for Jesus. And Luther wanted baptism to be the central defining event of his friend Johannes and of all believers and of you and of me. Not to scold us, not to wag his finger at us, but to set us free to follow the call and promise of Almighty God in Jesus Christ our Lord. How do we do this? I don't really know. Because it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not according to our thinking and our wisdom. It comes by faith, by the Spirit. There is a wonderful story, true story told of the famous um, Shakespearean actor, Sir Lawrence Olivier. He was playing King Lear on a stage in London one night, and he delivered the performance of his life. It's like Olivier was not there. People sat in the presence of King Lear, and the audience was spellbound by this performance. And afterwards, there was this, the, 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 the curtain closed, and there was this silence and then people came to their feet and there was this thunderous applause. They could hardly believe what they had just witnessed. And Olivier took a bow and then he scooted quickly out the back and disappeared. And the people kept on clapping and thundering and hooting and whistling or whatever they did in those days, you know, to get him to come back out to take another curtain call so they could acknowledge what had just taken place. And nobody could find him. And the, the stage manager or the theater uh, person, whoever he was, was looking all over for Sir, Sir Lawrence Olivier and finally found him in his dressing room, sitting in front of a mirror, staring at himself in the mirror with a scowl on his face. And he said, Larry, Lawrence, can't you hear? The people are calling for you to, to come take a bow. What is the matter with you? You've just delivered the the performance of your life, what is wrong? And Olivier turned and looked at him and he said, it's because I don't know how I did it. 
when the self is vacated and we rise as another person, there's a mystery, there's a miracle, there's a wonder about it. And we are called to be the church of Jesus Christ. We can't explain how in terms of human wisdom. We can't explain how it is that we might love one another like our own family, be dedicated to each other and to serving together in Christ's name. I don't know. I don't know if there's a how-to about that. It simply happens as we begin to live into the call of Christ at our baptism by faith. It happens by a gift and miracle of God. The story of Jesus' baptism is really brief. It's one sentence in Gospels, Mark, Mark's gospel. One sentence. <laughs> it says, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. There it is. Afterwards, it goes on with a little more detail, but that's the story of Jesus' baptism right there, one sentence. It's very brief. Because Mark does not want us to dwell on the, the, the ritual, the words, the, or anything like that. He rushes on quickly because he wants to connect Jesus' baptism to everything else that comes afterwards. What comes afterwards? First of all, Mark makes this observation, that as he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens ripped apart. There's a, a, there's a, 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 the wording in the Greek here denotes real violence. It's not just that the heavens opened. He sees them torn apart. And this violent tearing apart of the heavens is a sign of what's coming. It's a pointer to the cross, the violence of the cross which is coming. Now, Jesus will begin to experience this violence very quickly in more subtle forms, and it has its zenith. His, his suffering will, and the violence against him has its zenith at the cross. But it begins right away. But after the heavens are torn and ripped apart, what comes out of heaven is a dove, which is a symbol of peace and reconciliation, togetherness, forgiveness. So there's violence turned to peace. It's both there in the call of Christ at his baptism. The God that we worship is a, a God who suffers violence. The violence we see in the heavens being torn open is not God's violence against sinners. It's sinners' violence against God. God bears that violence, and because God bears it, peace descends on earth. Jesus prays for those who are killing him. Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. So God is a God who bears violence. This is not a new thing in Jesus. This is always the God who has created the earth. For God to allow there to be reality beyond God's self, there's a cost to God in creation itself. God is in the creation, suffering with the creation. So the fly is snapped, out of the, snapped off the leaf by the, the frog. And then the frog is gobbled up by the snake. Then the snake is torn apart by the hawk. These shoes are killing me. I mean, it's just there's a, there is suffering. There is a cost built in to the existence of life and love and community. There's a cost to this. God bears it. And as people called to be God's children, we bear a measure of the cost as well in ourselves. Well, If God doesn't pay us back 
for our violence, what does God do? St. Mark shows us immediately after the baptism, which is one of Mark's favorite words, by the way, immediately. We hear it a lot this year. In the baptism of Jesus, he receives his identity. He receives his name, Son of God. He receives, he, he now knows who he is and what God expects him to do. God expects him to represent his Father in the world. This Father who bears the violence that we foist upon him. And so Jesus is driven from his baptism into the wilderness. We'll deal with this more come Lent. Jesus is driven into the wilderness, and the wilderness is, and he faces temptation. Now, temptation is not just, oh, you know, you don't want to eat too much cake, or, you know, you don't want to look at the wrong pictures or something, right? The temptation, the central temptation is the temptation to believe that God is not with us, that God has forsaken us, or that God doesn't even exist, or at least won't listen to our prayers. That's the wilderness. That's the temptation that Jesus faces, and he stares that down. He knows he is called to, to bring God's love to people, and that they will not get it, and they will turn on him. He faces down that temptation. He has victory over it, and then he calls disciples. And immediately, they leave their nets and their work, and they follow him. How does that happen? I don't know. It happens by the Spirit. There's no how-to about it. Jesus just goes out and calls disciples, and they follow because the Spirit is, is, has been given. And then he teaches in their, uh, their synagogues, not just like their scribes and Pharisees, but he teaches with power and with authority. And then there's a man there with an unclean spirit, a demon, and Jesus casts it out with the word. And then they go to Peter's house, who's been called as one of the disciples. And Peter's mother-in-law is there, and she's sick with a terrible fever. And Jesus raises her up from her sick bed. And that word raises her up is a is a word connected to resurrection. Already the resurrection life is, is flowing out into the community through Jesus, and he heals Peter's mother and she serves them. And then, that's, this is all the first day when Jesus comes back from the wilderness. And then uh, it's sunset, and you think, oh, it's time to curl up by the fire and have a, have a glass of wine or something. No, because the, the word has gone out. This man is full of the Spirit of God, and the people gather around the, the doorstep of, of Peter's home and crawling on Jesus to heal them, lay his hands on them. And so he heals them, and he casts out demons, and he teaches. And they finally, I don't know what time they get to bed, but the next morning, you'd think, time to sleep in? No, Jesus is up early, out to pray. And while he's praying, a man comes, a leper, who you should stay far away from. And he Jesus cries to Jesus, have mercy on me, Jesus. If you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I will. And he reaches out and he touches the man like a brother. And the man is made clean. All of this, this is just the first day, the first day after coming back from the wilderness, right after the, the baptism. Mark is telling us that all of this is what the baptism of Jesus means. It's the call of God to know who you are and to do what God calls you to do, Jesus. And we are baptized now along with Peyton. We are baptized into Christ. We become the hands and the feet of Christ in this world. We too are baptized into God's mission to this world to help it become something it is not yet to help it to imagine the kingdom of heaven on earth, what that would be like, and to live into that, to put on our capes, Superman, Jesus man, Jesus woman, and to open our mouths and speak words of love and forgiveness and grace and mercy and peace, to live into Jesus Christ and see what God will do. Johannes, are you baptized? Yes, of course. 
Good day. Have a great day, Johannes. Well, our job as a church is to grow into Christ, to act out God's amazing grace, and to have our blind eyes opened to see our neighbor, not for who we complainingly think they are, but for who Jesus sees them to be, precious children of God, to speak that, to live that, to act that out. Are you baptized? Yes. Good day. Let's all have a good day. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing uh, the hymn of the day, Baptized and Set Free to Be God's People. Uh, during the last, the singing of the last verse, let's have the baptismal party and family uh, gather at the back. We'll walk up the middle here during the last verse, and we'll gather back there at the baptismal font. First, let's all stand as we're able if that's hard for you, you stay seated, that's fine. 453, baptized and set free. Please, uh, congregation, turn to page 227 in the front portion of the book and follow along those portions indicated with bold print. And we'll be using, uh, there's a couple places where your lines come on the left side of the page, page wherever there are options. So that's the one that we'll use, especially after the baptism. I want to signal this for you right now. We have a great line of, of celebration and rejoicing and encouragement right after the baptism. Uh, it's okay. Why don't you, you can step right up close. You want to get a good, good close-up view here. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope 
through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And now sponsors have your line there. Yeah, Peyton Joanne Mater has been presented for baptism. We don't bring ourselves for baptism. Somebody else brings us. The hands and feet of Christ call us to follow. Jesus leads us into baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, uh, Chad uh, Shelby, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? If so, give your answer. We do. As you bring Peyton to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities, to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God made and to work for justice and peace. And so I ask you, parents and sponsors, do you promise to help Peyton grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, give your answer. We do. We do. Now, congregation at Grace, oh, first, sponsors, particularly you, do you promise to nurture Peyton in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? If so, give your answer. We do. And now, people of God, do you promise to support Peyton and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We do. All right. I think it never ends. It's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that as Shelby is washed in the waters of baptism, she may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Can we just kind of bring Shelby? Peyton. Our, Peyton. <laughs> Shelby, you want to get in on this too? No. Yeah. All right. It's kind of warm.
Peyton, what's Peyton's middle name again? Joanne. Peyton Joanne. You're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You're going to just hold on to that, Chad, right there, a little napkin. You can take that with you. People of God, we have a blessing to pronounce. Blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Congregation may be seated as we go up in front of the altar. Yeah, give, let people have a good, well, we'll, have, we'll do that afterwards. We'll get a good look at her. I'll come right up here. And we ask parents and sponsors if you might come and you could, if it's possible for you to kneel um, in front of the altar here. We have a, some prayers to offer here. Yeah, right here, if that works. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. And now, Lord, sustain with the gift of your Holy Spirit, little Peyton, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. Oil has, from ancient times, been a sign of the presence of the Spirit of God. So we'll put a little sign of the cross on Peyton's forehead. And we say, See, these are not my words. These words are given me to say. I want to get them right. Peyton, child of God. Oh, that doesn't look like a cross anymore. Sorry. There we go. Peyton, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Now we have a light, a little candle. People everywhere will light candles on the day of Peyton's birth, but I encourage you to take this candle and uh, on the anniversary of this day, light it for her. And this would be a wonderful day for you sponsors to remember with a little gift or card and say, Peyton, remember, remember what happened today? You were baptized into Jesus, risen from death. And by our lives and our witness, we say to little Peyton, Peyton, child of God, uh, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. All right, one more thing. We have sponsor. I'm just going to give these for you to carry. There's a, 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 a certificate for each of you and then a certificate for her. And we also have a gift given by the church. And the, it's, it's both a practical gift and a symbolic one as uh, uh, Peyton is wrapped up in the love of Christ and in the love of Grace Lutheran Church. Which is just in these cold winter nights, this is really nice. So, Mama, I'll just give that to you. We could stand and have you face the congregation and let us all get a good look at little Peyton. Let us welcome this newly baptized little girl. We welcome you. Yeah, okay. Amen. And now we add our voices to that. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. All right. We can blow that out and put it right in there. 
And let's just, let's just you and I, Chad, walk down here for a minute. We just want people to get a good little look at little, little Peyton because she is worth looking at. Isn't she something? Huh? Show her off, Chad. Let's, let's see her over here. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is somebody you want to show off. Yeah. How nice. All right, everybody want to get a, a good look at little Peyton afterwards. Uh, Okay, once he got going, I can't call him back. So, uh, that, that's good, Chad. You can. What's next? No, now we pray. Now we pray. All right, let's do that. May we stand for prayer if we are able. Get that on first, honey. That's good. It goes back to be on. Okay. Confident that God, our light and our salvation, hears us, we pray for God's mission for the church, the world, and for all people in need. For the church and for the ministry of the baptized, that your Holy Spirit will teach all people to forgive sins, ending violence and hatred, and ushering in peace throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. For earth and all living things, for favorable weather, for plants and animals and ecosystems, that you will cause all creation to thrive under the care of faithful stewards. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of national and local governments, agencies, and organizations, for areas of war and religious conflict, especially in the Middle East that you will bless all people with plenty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who suffer the ravages of fire and storm and all manner of natural disasters, for those who are sick or grieving or lonely or in prison, especially those who we name aloud before you now. Dan. John. that Christ, the lover of our souls, will soothe and console all in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Amen. prayer. For Peyton Modler, her parents and sponsors, and for all who love her, that they may find within themselves the faith, courage, and determination to live into the promise of her baptism into Christ, that she may live her life with joy and purpose and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and for our congregation, that in our joys and sorrows we remember that we are your beloved children and the hands and feet of Christ risen in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, you hear our prayers even before we speak them. Receive them for the sake of the one through whom you have revealed your goodness and power. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We turn to our neighbor with a handshake and a greeting of peace, the peace of Christ. Mm -hmm.
receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him your beloved son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Zana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember us, O Lord, in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We who are many are the one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Come, be filled with light and life. Mm -hmm. 